Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. Now then, been an eventful week, hasn't it? Not done that many videos this week. We're going for quality over quantity. That's what we're going for this week. Now, straight in them balls deep, no messing about. <laughs> So the big weightlifter won in Saudi Arabia, then, eh? A country that murdered 156 people in 2017. Tortured them, murdered them, beheaded them, whatever, burnt them, did horrible things to them. That's, that's three people a week for a full year. Three people every week being murdered tortured, I mean one of them, they even did him in embassy didn't they, journalist eh? a country that Tiger Woods has just refused to play golf in and he was offered 3 million dollars for 3 days he refused but good old Phil Mickelson didn't did he eh? Phil Mickelson he said as a quote, as, as quoted from the Blockbusters uh, program on ITV years ago, they said, "Do you want three million, Phil, to play golf in uh, Saudi?" Because uh, Tiger Woods has knocked it back. His reply: "Yes, please, Bob." So, good old Phil Mickelson, the Eddie Earn of golf. Speaking of golf, Eddie Earn used to be a golf agent, didn't he? Until they ran him out at sport. Upset a few too many people, I've heard. But anyway, it is what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? It is what it is. No, it is. It isn't what it is. And it ain't boxing. It's beheading people in a country, and they think that's good, do they? <laughs> hey, if they were that easy about it, how come they had to go visit Saudi twice before they went over there? Because all Sky staff were papping the pants about going over there. They wanted assurances, didn't they? That they were all going to be nice and safe. Eh? And Eddie Earn wanted assurances that he got his money up front. Good old Eddie Earn, Mr. Escrow Account, playing it safe, Mr. Accountant. <laughs> anyway, did the big weightlifter, did he say, did he say no, like Tiger Woods? Hey, did the big weightlifter, did he say no? No, he didn't, did he? Did he even have a say in it? Probably not. You know, I mean, the people around him, and that that he, that even he's like a perform a performing dog in it for them all now, for the people around him. Now, they've even got him fighting like Vladimir now. Now that they know he's a bit suspect around the old whiskers, he's having to fight like Vladimir like Johnny Nelson, he's throwing a punch and going backwards. Scared to death, but nobody dare say a word. I don't know. No, he didn't say no, did he, Joshua, to Saudi money. He said, yes, please, Bob. And his answer was simple. We ain't got a problem with going to Saudi. I'm a Muslim. Oh, my God. Do your own work. Do your own work, Mr. Big Weightlifter. It's amazing though how people can ch can change in it when they hear that noise. Cha ching, cha ching. It's amazing, isn't it? They're good about you. Good about with a snake, wouldn't you? For right pound note, some people would, wouldn't they? But the reality is this, and I don't even call him Eddie no more. I just call him Pinocchio. I give them all a name now. I don't refer to him as a, a person now. I give them all a name. Now, it's up to you all to do your own work to uh, keep up with it, but we know who Pinocchio is, don't we? But this is how I look at it. The reality is this. If Pinocchio told him he were going to get same money as in Saudi Arabia to fight in China, the big weightlifter would be walking around now in full Charlie Chan outfit, wouldn't he? Eating egg full young rice. Do you know what I mean? They say he's good for British boxing. No, no, no. He's good for AJ boxing. That's what he's good for. AJ boxing. So what about the presser then afterwards? I mean, I haven't watched that much of it. You know, mainly because me, mainly because I'm a sore loser and me bet 
my bet didn't come in. <laughs> but uh, the uh, the black lady at the press conference who asked the first question, she put it on Joshua's toe straight away. They didn't know what to say, did they? They had to they had to be humble, didn't they, and take it on chin and come out with politician answers. But that woman, I give her respect. It reminded me of Helen. Uh, who answered? Uh, who asked Vladimir that question at uh, the Tyson Fury Vladimir Klitschko rematch, the first press conference, the one in Manchester? She re it reminded me of that question, a good question, and uh, they were political about their answer, weren't they, Joshua and Eddie Earn? Yeah, but they've they've got it off to a T now, aren't they? They just wheel Eddie Earn out, and they don't they don't fluff the lines no more, do they? But would that? Uh, would she have, would that woman, would she have got, the same woman, would she have got a chance to ask that question at the O2 in, in the UK? No, she wouldn't. No way. They'd have danced around the question and moved on, wouldn't they? That, that's what would have happened, uh, without a shadow of a doubt. Mm. Which brings me to the YouTube, YouTubers and the podcast since. Now, I haven't watched a lot. I've heard, I've, heard, I've heard a couple, and uh, it's amazing, isn't it, how people think that they can just put a YouTube video out or a podcast and say, oh, I'm going to eat humble pie or I'm going to take an L. No, it ain't about that. Why do you have to take an L? I'm not taking an L. Am I? Heck, what, after all that that they've just served up? I had Ruiz down to beat him, but before that I said he'd pull out with an injury. Now it's come out, Ruiz were injured, but they won't let him pull out. So my mole in the hole were bang on, wasn't he? All right. So I'm not taking an L. Ruiz won't right, worry. So that's Porky's narrative, and I'm going to stick to it. I'm not going to come on here and say I'm going to take an L, or uh, I'm going to eat humble pie because this is how we are. No, 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 no. What happened to Joshua the Savage? Well, what happened, Terry, to Joshua the Savage? Hey, that's what we were told. Joshua's a savage. Redemption, redemption. Do me a favour. Redemption. He got embarrassed in the first fight. Joshua. He did what he had to do in the second fight. He won nine rounds. Other guy won three rounds. But don't talk to me about redemption when they won't let Ruiz pull out. Do me a favour. It's Ruiz's fault, isn't it? If he's out of shape and. You know, his team are not looking after him. That's his fault, isn't it? That's his own fault. Joshua behaved like a professional. They were in the gym early after the first loss. He had the right mindset, so fair play to him. But don't talk to me about redemption, please. I don't want to hear about redemption. Because that won't redemption at all. Now... All these YouTubers coming out and they're looking to kiss ass. That's what it is. It's kiss ass time. They're going to be none of that from me. No, 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 no. I know what I saw. I saw a man fighting scared, frightened to death. They've papered over the cracks. That's what they've done. Papered over the cracks. And I'm gonna, As I'm going to move forward the rest of this script that I've got here, I'm going to show you why. Now... This is how I look at it, right? Um, people who I know have given opinions and said they eat an humble pie, and I'm not. I'm not as humble myself. You know what I'm like, all you people who follow me for the last two years. I, I call it back, as I'm not stupid. Yes, the big weightlifter won. He won nine rounds to three against an embarrassment in Andy Ruiz. But don't tell me it was an Ali masterclass, Barry McGuigan. Don't tell me that were a masterclass, Ozzy Smith. Please. He was fighting a man five stone overweight. The man were loads bigger than he were in last fight. He wasn't the same man, but Joshua prepared, so you've got to give him credit. But if Joshua's Ali and he's putting on masterclasses, why don't they want to fight Usyk? But don't tell me it was an Ali masterclass, as if it was, they'd be fighting Usek next and not 39-year-old Pulef. Pulef's 39, isn't he, next? He's into his 40th year, Pulef, when they fight next. He's into his 40th year. 
Oh, 39 in May, Pool. After looking at fighting in June, aren't they? So that means he's into his 40th year, like Alexander Povetkin. Vladimir were into his 42nd year. I mean, God, we've had Matt Skelton and uh, he were 40, wasn't he? You know, and if, if, the other one who fitted tyres, forgot his name now, but they can't keep what rolling out these guys pushing 40 and gone past 40. It's not good. No. Let's have it right. Usek is known to us. Right. Usek's a better fight in it than Pool F. Right. I can get behind Joshua. I'll get my Joshua flag out if he fights Usek. I won't wave it though. I'll just get it out at draw. Look at it. I won't, put it, I won't stick it on the side of the house. But... <laughs> Look, it's got to be Usek next. He's Joshua's age. He's from his era. He was heavyweight gold medalist in 2012, Usek. Joshua was the super heavyweight gold. Usek's a southpaw. So why not? It's a perfect blend of styles. Now, they've both got the same... Well, I don't know, I wrote it here. He's Olympic gold, Usek. Same year as Joshua. The big weightlifter, same year as the big weightlifter won it. He's same promoter. He smoked Tony Bellew's boots. In fact, they're still on fire now. He smoked Tony Bellew into semi-retirement. Nah, Bellew wanted to retire, but he just can't leave it alone, can he? He like yeah, he just has to have his fix, doesn't he, Bellew? But you know, P Pinocchio wants to go for Pool Left, doesn't he? Why? Well, Pool Left's in his 40th year. You know, his prime's gone. He's finished, Pool Left. He's from the Vla Vladimir era. You know, he he's finished. Finish, Pool Left. Finish. So, I saw uh, him struggle with Yui Fury. I was ringside. I was one foot from edge at ring, if you look. on. Go watch Channel 5. You'll see me sat in press row with Ron, Ron Lewis. Shocking, shocking pool. If he was shocking that night against Yui Fury, and uh, he's been shocking since. You know, pool F next, which means a purse bid, doesn't it? With Bob Arum now, Eddie Hearn's not going to win a purse bid. They don't win purse bids. They love it when you win a purse bid. You you have to put all show on and everything. Other fighter just collects the TV money and just doesn't do anything. It's on Bob Arum then, isn't it? It's Bob, Ar Bob, Arum, Bob, Arum, Bob Arum pays for the fight, right? It's on him. It could be put on anywhere. They could end up in Macau. They could end up in Vegas. Anywhere. If Bob Arum wins that purse bid, Eddie Hearn better get ready. It's all right trying to play it safe like Mr. Accountant. Playing it safe, wanting cards stacked in your in your favour. But there's no rematch clause we, with... Uh, with a, a purse bid. Dennis can a bid for this if he wants. Obviously he's not going to do it. But if he wanted to bid for it. If you've got a promoter's licence. Anybody can bid for this fight. Anybody. Al Heyman. Anybody. There's no rematch clause. But Joshua's hardly going to lose against Pulaf. He's shot to pieces. Now if you put Pulaf next to Usek. Who would you say is favourite to win? Going to be Usek isn't it? Joshua can't deal with southpaws. He's only dealt with Charlie Martin. He didn't go near a proper southpaw. Look what Rob Camarelli did to him in an Olympic final. Bashed him up. It were 18 points apiece, wasn't it? They did it on count back and gave Joshua a gold medal. He got a gift. He doesn't cope very good with southpaws. He's not been boxing long enough to deal with southpaws. Not been boxing long enough at all. Yeah, he got a gift against Charlie Martin, but... He doesn't deal with southpaws very good. And Usex, very, very, very good. He's as probably the top not. He's probably the best southpaw in world boxing at the moment. So the best southpaw in world boxing should be fighting the heavyweight champion in Anthony Joshua. But you're not going to get that, are you? We're not going to get it. They're not going to do that. Do you know what I mean? Like I say, it's just going to mean a purse bid. And it's going to be more headaches for P Pinocchio, isn't it? You know, if he doesn't win purse bid. So Usek is an easier rematch. I mean, Usek is is a is an Eddie, is a Pinocchio fighter, isn't he? An Eddie Earn fighter. 
you know, so Usek and Joshua is easier to match. So why risk a pooler? It's easy to match. So why risk a pool F fight? Has there been no rematch if pool F, pool F wins, as I've just said? I'll tell you why. As Pool F's into his 40th year, as I've just said, and the big weightlifter, he's nailed on to beat him. Whereas Usek, it's not so nailed on, is it? So Pinocchio, now wanting to try dominate at heavyweight, which is fair enough, but the fight last weekend is only papering off at cracks. That's papering off at cracks that last weekend. That win. That don't mean Joshua's best, but his CV suggests we have to put him at number one. He's got five wins over world champions now, even though there's a question mark against every single one of them. And he's got four belts, so we have to put Joshua at number one. Wilder two, Fury three, but people eating humble pie are doing it to go with public opinion as they don't want to be seen as controversial or they don't want people to abuse them or they don't want to stand on what they said before they all want to say well i'm gonna to have to eat humble pie joshua put a master class on no 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 that wasn't a master class in my opinion he did what he had to do but come on look what he was fighting against he was like fighting somebody like me come on talking about like it were ali against you know george foreman and you know, Ernie Terrell were talking, people were talking like it was Ali, Ernie Terrell. No, it won't. It won't. We're awful, man. How many people are going to watch that fight again? And how many people listening to me now have watched Tyson against Vladimir? How many people have watched it twice? The reality is not nice in the boxing bubble when you, when you get abused. But who cares? You've got to take it on chin and be thick skinned. That's what you've got to do. You've got to be thick skinned and go employ somebody who's a computer tech guy and he'll get you all their IP addresses who IP addresses who are abusing you. Then you can deal with it properly, can't you, when you email them. <laughs> you've got to take it on chin, aren't you, and move forward. People coming on here saying, Oh, I'm gonna take an L and I'm gonna I'm gonna eat humble pie. Do me a favour, man. Come on. Like I said earlier, where were Joshua the Savage? You know, when he comes up against somebody technical, he doesn't want to fight, does he? He didn't want to fight Parker, he's a bit technical. And, and, he, and he tried it with Ruiz, but he won't do it again. But he's probably knocked his confidence for good that getting smacked, sparked about by Ruiz. But will I be rushing out? To put the big weightlifter on again against Ruiz in Saudi. No, I won't. Same as I don't watch Fury Vladimir, like I've just mentioned. The narrative is spun already. Pulev is next. As they sold out Cardiff for Pulev before, if you remember. But Takem ended up coming in. You know, it was before he got injured, so they'd sold it out. So Barry Earn will look at it as money on the table. While ever they are pushing the big weightlifter in the Middle East. So that's what they'll do. Hashtag stay humble. That's what it is, isn't it? £66 million sterling, tax free, stay humble. The reality is Pulef is in his 40th year this and this junior will be billed if they fight this June. He's in his 40th year and... He's only having one loss to Vladimir and the big weightlifter will be sold as having beat everybody that he's fought. That's how they'll sell it. Well, Joshua's beat everybody that he's fought and Pulev's only lost to Vladimir, an all-time great. That's how they'll see it. They'll revert back to what worked for them before in Cardiff. But the simple thing is, if it happens in, in England this time and nobody bids for it, what will happen is this. I think the fans will vote with their feet because they're getting fed up of it now, aren't they? I mean, how much longer can Joshua dodge a proper hard fight? So that's how I look at it. We want to see the big fights now, the big, juicy, wilder ones, don't we? Wilder, Fury, Joshua, Usyk. We want to see all them. Dillian White. We want to see all those guys in the mix, don't we? Now that's what we want to see. Now I don't think it's a lot to ask. 
uh, you know, I, I want to see Luis Ortiz in that mix as well, or is, or are we going to see Alexander Usyk, the southpaw with all the skills, but he signed like Luis Ortiz was signed to keep away from Joshua. Because if Joshua vacates that WBO belt, right, and he fights Usek, that could, and sorry, and Joshua fights Pulev, it could come back to bite him in bum. Because if Pulev beats him, Joshua's out in cold. But if he fights Usek and loses, Ernie can make him have another fight, can't he? He can't do that with Pulev. So you've got to be very careful, Eddie Earn, how he plays this. He's trying to protect Joshua, but he's also trying to dominate and line his own pockets as well. So, but like I've just said here, they're going to sell it as Joshua's beat everybody. Pulev's only lost to Vladimir, and uh, which is which is great, isn't it? He's beat everybody, Joshua, and true, but he's not faced Wilder or Usyk yet, and he should and he should. And he, and he never faced Ortiz, which he should have done. But, have no fear. Eduardo is here. And will be for many more year after year. So, that's unless Pooh left. Did I say Pooh left then, or Pooh left? We'll call him Pooh, eh? That's unless Pooh can smoke the big weightlifter and throw a spanner in it works. But, a 30-year-old Joshua... Against a man in his 40th year, only has one ended in my opinion. Let me let me let me just say that again. Joshua's 30 year old when he fights Pulev in June. Pulev is into his 40th year, and he's only got one one ended, and that's a KO for the 30 year old. As Pulev couldn't mix it with Vladimir, he couldn't even mix it with Yuri Fury from what I saw. And the big weightlifter iced Vladimir, didn't he? But he was in his 42nd year. So do the maths. It's an easy win for Joshua. And it's just a case of getting more miles out of, him, isn't it? Out of Joshua, isn't it, for Eddie Hearn? I mean, but Styles make fights, but Pulev is the safe opponent for June. And he's more millions towards the it's more millions towards the big weightlifters target of being a billionaire. I wanna be a billionaire because I'm good for British boxing. I mean my name is AJ <laughs> Hey All them casuals out there What about all them people taking L's watching that? Load of rubbish of the night and they're going on their channels and they're saying I'm gonna take an L <laughs> Oh my God, eh? So where does this leave? The body snatcher then. Dillian White. AKA the can man. Where does it leave the can man? 